rebuilding a model steam plant to part 47. Wiring the two lamps to the dynamo in series made them light, but they were dim. In this episode I rewire the lights using some really nice looking LED lights. I need to find out the polarity of the terminals on the dynamo. For this I'm using my ancient voltmeter, which is well past its best. It is reading inaccurately, so much so that I've just bought another one via Amazon, but it tells me what the polarity is on the dynamo's terminals. It turned out that I'd wired it the wrong way round. So here, I'm underneath the baseboard, I've disconnected the connecting blocks, and I'm doing a test to see whether these lamps work in series. I wired them initially in parallel. I think Ohm's law comes into this, and I should know better really, because I did train as an electronics engineer when I was 16, but now I'm 71, I've sort of forgotten the fundamentals. The lights would not light at all in parallel, but in series they do, but they're not very bright. I'll turn out the light to illustrate this. Yes, they're quite dim. I wouldn't like to walk around a full-size engine house if the lights were as dim as these. I think these are probably 3 watt bulbs, and they do put a load on the dynamo. And the poor Stuart number 10 has to revolve very quickly to keep them lit. But there is a solution that I don't often use. I bought these yesterday using Amazon Prime, and they arrived today, and believe it or not, this is a set of 10 LED bulbs, complete with 10 miniature ES-type bulb holders. These LEDs are warm white, not to be confused with the brilliantly white light you normally get from LEDs. First though, let's take a look at the original bulbs, and here I found out that the bulbs are not actually fastened into the lamp standards. The very thin solid core wire is soldered directly to the bulb, then the bulb is wrapped in insulation tape, which not only insulates the electrical connections, it makes the bulb a snug fit in the lamp standard. Here I'm unsoldering the wires from the bulb for no specific reason. I cut, stripped and twisted the two wires together, because what I'm going to do is use the existing wiring to pull through the new wiring. And to the few viewers who write in and start the comment with, Are you aware that? Well, yes, I am aware that this is a very bad soldered connection. But it doesn't matter. It only has to last long enough to pull the new wiring through the lamp standard. I soldered the new wiring into the bulb holder as seen here. The wire goes through the terminals and it's securely soldered in position. Time to test the bulb. I really like the colour, the white balance is perfect for the job. The next thing to do is to wire the dynamo with the correct polarity. I tinned the wiring before pushing it through the terminals and lightly holding the wiring in place using the two screws. I did this two or three times because I found that if I over tightened the screws they actually went through the wire and broke the connection. I sat and thought about the best way to fix these bulbs into the standards. I could use silicone rubber, I could use epoxy resin, but in the end I went for insulation tape which makes the bulb and the holder a very snug fit in the lamp. It seemed to work with the original configuration, so why change something that works? The only difference was I wanted the wire to be in tension inside the tube to keep the bulb in place, so I wrapped the end of the wire, so I wrapped the end of the wire using some more insulation tape. I pulled the wire tight as I wrapped it in insulation tape. Once again I'm going to wire this in parallel, there's no point in putting it in series. There is an extra connection on the electrical connector block. This will allow the new owner to connect the dynamo to this diorama that I'm giving him. Here are some details about it from a video I made a while ago. I have a dynamo mounted on the end of a Stuart S50, and this is very well mounted so I can remove it without leaving any trace that it was ever there in the first place. Before I do though, I'm going to have a play with it. It's dark outside now, so I also turned off the workshop lights. I think this is quite good, and I enjoyed playing with it for a few minutes. And while I was playing with it, I had an idea. Why not use this diorama with the large steam plant I'm about to rebuild? 
If you've seen the series so far called Rebuilding a Model Steam Plant, it seems a very logical progression to make it so that this light array can be plugged into that. Here's a shot of the plant before I started working on it. It has now changed considerably. Time for me to go. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Let there be light. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.